Hey, John Smith again with WireData.net, and this is the second part of the FlowTick series on using ExtraHop as a InfoSec tool, or using the wire data that ExtraHop collects as an InfoSec tool and integrating that with Splunk. Uh, what I didn't do in the first interview was give you an explanation of how ExtraHop works, so I just want to do that really quick. So the way ExtraHop works is very similar to an IDS or an IPS. You span a port, and you allow ExtraHop to listen on that port and it's able to see different uh, types of events and what these are what you're seeing here is extra hop is listening on the wire and there are predefined in the in the same way that an IDS or an IPS might see a signature as an issue or something to report on extra hop sees certain layer 7 flows and these are all layer 7 triggers or layer 7 visibility that extra hop has and what extra hop does is the appliance monitors the network takes these events when you set them up as triggers and essentially writes those triggered events to your big data backend for the purposes of this video for with Splunk and then from there once you have that data in Splunk you can take advantage of it by parsing it and making some logical sense of it all so as you can see here I'm running flow tick in real time and you can see the data is actually flowing in uh, pretty nicely and what I want to talk about today we talked about um, looking at the clients last last video post this time I want to talk about looking at the server IP so now that we have the data in Splunk I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple of quick queries and just give you an idea of what you can do with this so the first command I ran here is a stats command and what I'm doing is I'm counting the time which is something that's unique that's assigned to every single record that extra hop sends to Splunk so Splunk assigns an underscore time value to it so I count the number of times which gives me the number of instances that that a record occurs and what I'm looking for is the server IP and the server port and here's what we're looking at so what this can give you an idea of is what what servers are being connected to over which ports now if I look here um, at the let's say uh, this here I see 2598 so that's obviously a Citrix server if I see connectivity over an odd port that's not something that's being hosted on this server then that's something to be aware of that might be an issue by looking at those ports here if you look at uh, uh, 1.53 you see 1433 so this is my database server now if this is not my database server if it's a web server and someone has installed something on there that they weren't supposed to that's something of concern likewise if this is the workstation segment you shouldn't see things like like um, 1433 and port 80 people shouldn't be installing those and here obviously you see this is my my active directory domain controller you see the LDAP port there but basically these are the ports and protocols and the number of times that there have that connections have been made to it this can be very valuable when you're trying to root out bad behavior now if I want to drill down I can actually do that just like I did in the previous video by just typing in a search and putting in the IP address so what I'm looking at is a particular server and if I want to see everything that that server is doing I can put that in there and I can see all of the connections that are made to it as I explained earlier the flow tick trigger actually is a layer 4 trigger that will give you not only performance data but you'll actually see who's talking to who and that can be really valuable when you're looking at advanced persistent threats or the, some of this more complicated malware that's out there so this is port 138 that's a Microsoft port I'm not too worried about it if I put my SQL server in there I should see 1433 this looks very consistent so all of this is as expected what you want to look for is things that you don't expect to see and one of the great things about this now we're looking at internal uh, servers okay but let's say like in the instance of earlier this year uh, the grocery chain uh, schnucks and um, actually Sony PlayStation they had some pretty bad breaches and if you have an infected system it can be you can use the flow tick to actually see if it's sending data externally so let's say there's some malware on a system you can actually 
see that making a connection for someone to steal your intellectual property they have to get the data from your device to their device and to do that outside of just physical hardware theft they have to enter the wire once they go on the wire extra hop will see that traffic in particular if you're if you're uh, triggering on the flow tick event and what I'm looking at here what I'm looking at here is the flow tick. I'm creating a regular expression that will allow me to use a function that will let me do a reverse lookup. So there's an actual script within Splunk that will let me do a reverse lookup so that I can see who they're connecting to. So I'm parsing that out with a regular expression. I'm using Google Maps and this is a command that you get when you install the Google Maps software in Splunk and then I'm just taking the number of connections as instances by client IB P by the server by the server port and if you look I'm using IP there because we switched that with regex it's okay if if you that if you didn't understand that there's plenty of documentation on how to use Rex um, and then I'm grabbing the geo data here and then I'm leveraging that lookup script that Splunk gives me and what I'm doing here by putting this uh, where the city does not equal quote quote Splunk won't geocode your 192.168 server IP so I want to exclude my local traffic and I just want to have my external traffic that I've made connections to and what you see here is a number of external connections uh, these are all expected uh, this is actually a subnet IP that I'm um, just testing a website with so that's expected behavior none of this is particularly damning none of this is particularly worrisome but let's say you had a system that was infected with malware and was phoning home to an IP address like China or, or an IP address in China or Russia something like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a 30 second window here to run in real time and you're seeing the data come in and let's just say my domain controller and I'm generating this um, just just with uh, on purpose so but I'm just gonna go to some of these sites in China and I'm gonna ge generate some traffic in China and within 30 seconds you should start to see and there you see it let me pause it so if this were an infected workstation that were phoning home to China you would know within 30 seconds in fact that was considerably less than 30 seconds but the maximum time you should wait is 30 seconds to find out that a system is infected and that your intellectual property is being sent off site a lot of these high profile breaches have involved advanced persistent threats or malware sending data off site for several months at a time grabbing the wire data with extra hop exporting it to a big data platform like Splunk positions you to be able to see this post haste that positions you to be able to see compromised systems talking to sites that they shouldn't be talking to within seconds and not a matter of hours days weeks or in some of the cases of the the more more egregious breaches months before they find out that the crown jewels are being stolen anyway that's just another way to use extra hop as a security tool by looking at the server IP hopefully the regular expression stuff didn't intimidate anybody all of these queries and all of these triggers can be downloaded for free at wiredata.net and thanks so much for listening and have a great day